have an, uh, uh, another panelist, uh, a guest, uh, Ryan uh, Melser. Welcome, Ryan. Uh, and why don't you go ahead and take a, a few minutes here uh, to tell us about yourself uh, and also about American Battery Technology and the exciting things you're doing there. Great. Thank you, Tom. Good to be here. So at American Battery Technology Company, we have two parallel businesses. We have developed a first of kind integrated system for the recycling of lithium ion batteries, where we're able to take in full packs and modules from electric vehicles or stationary storage systems or consumer electronics. And in a very high speed and automated fashion to separate those packs to modules, to cells, to cell components, and then to sort those components in a matter of minutes. So we're able to do that in an automated fashion with very minimal direct labor. And we're able to do it while the material is still electrically charged. So not needing that very slow discharging period to begin with. Once we have them separated, we're able to sell many of the lower value scrap metals. And then for each of the high value battery metals, we've developed our own chemical extraction train where we can extract one of those metals at a time, purify them even past industrial grade up to battery grade quality. And we've been working with some of the very large cathode companies in the world to sell these battery metals directly back to them, which they then make into new cathode material to go back into new cells, to go back into the market. So we're enabling a closed loop economy by closing the chain on these battery metals. And separate from our recycling business, we also work in primary metal extraction. So working with ore and brine resources throughout the US and have developed new methods of again, extracting individual battery metals. So we've been starting off with different lithium resources we're using to extract from, and also doing some development on cobalt and nickel bearing resources. And again, these primary metals we're able to extract, to purify, to battery cathode grade, and then to sell into the market. So while the occupied mass of electric vehicles keeps growing on the road, recycling is very important, but even 100% recycling can't make up demand because we keep adding more material to this closed loop. So it's important that we have both our recycling system and our primary extraction systems to really satisfy the needs of this rapidly growing market. Thank you, Ryan. Very exciting technology. And I think it's quite interesting having both you and Steven here. And we'll dive into why I think that's the case in a moment. Uh, so, Ryan, we'll come back to you. I want to uh, return now. Can you tell us a bit more about, uh, the, I, uh, as I understand it, there are two aspects uh, to oversimplify things dramatically, two aspects to your technology in a big general, big picture sense. Uh, one is the uh, renewable, the, the recycling uh, aspect of your technology, uh, which is on uh, obviously uh, uh, the the far side of the of the process where you're where you're finished with the battery and and what happens to the battery after that. But you've also got something at the beginning of the process, which is the extraction process itself for extracting lithium uh, from the environment around us. Uh, and and uh, I'd like to know a bit more about about each of those technologies uh, and how they relate. So starting first with the recycling technology, can you tell us uh, what makes American Batteries technology? Uh, different from uh, the, the, the processes that are out there already that relate to recycling. Yes, of course. And, and like you mentioned, there's the beginning of a process. Usually there's the end of a process. But because we're creating a closed loop economy, we end up on both sides of it. So we are receiving the end of life material and we are producing the new battery metals that go back into new battery cells themselves. So it doesn't end up being a, a beginning and an end. This really just closes the loop to make these battery metals be used indefinitely. On the recycling front, what we really do differently is many processes today really just use what were designed to be, you know, scrap metal and stainless steel recycling systems. They start off with, you know, very high temperature melting furnaces where they simply melt all the material together. And when you have aluminum or scrap metal that, that works rather well, but when you mix batteries in, there are many elemental materials within the battery cell that become very toxic when they're taken at high temperature like that, such as you know, fluorine and phosphorus and sulfur elements really get turned into this toxic air emission. You get particulates of heavy metals that are released in the air as well. And many of those materials end up going in large amounts of water emissions. So you either have to allow those materials to go out as contaminants or you need to spend on costly systems to then have them removed again from the air and water emissions. And when you do that, there are high value materials in batteries like cobalt and nickel and lithium, but there are many low value materials like iron and aluminum and mixed plastics 
And when you simply melt everything together, it then makes it very difficult to separate out the high value from the low value materials. So it really hurts your recovery efficiency. It results in a much larger environmental impact and it's more costly. So again, in my background and much of the team I brought on here the past year, you know, we were some of the initial designers of you know, the largest battery factory in the world, the, the Tesla Gigafactory outside of Reno. So we started back in early 2015 and really started when that factory was a patch of dirt out in the desert and were part of every part of the design of that facility, the startup of the systems, the commissioning, and the troubleshooting of many of those production lines. And really from learning how batteries are made from a fundamental manufacturing side, how they go from powders to slurries to coated electrodes to dry and press systems to rolls to cells to modules to packs. So instead of actually just melting everything together, we've used that skill set to design what we call a, a demanufacturing process, where we essentially back out each of those operations in a very automated and high speed fashion that allows us to get back to separated metals and powders within a matter of minutes without a large amount of labor and while really preserving the separation of those high and low value materials. And then once we have that high value powder separated out from the rest of the low value materials, that's where we use a, a custom chemical extraction train that we've developed. And these types of chemical extraction processes can also have large environmental impacts if not done correctly. They can consume large amounts of acids and bases, use very large amounts of solvents and oxidizers. And by removing so many of those low value materials upfront mechanically, we're able to use a much more targeted and simpler chemical extraction train for these high value materials. We've also developed a system where we can actually generate our own acid and base and reagents on site ourselves instead of buying from the open market where again those second and third tier emissions are very large for how acids and bases are manufactured today so by having this automated high speed system at the front end where we have absolutely no high temperature operations even our process heat and our space heat is generated by waste heat recovery and electric heat pumps we have no combustion anywhere on site. We have near zero air emissions. We've developed a closed loop water system. So no hazardous liquid water discharge. And by upgrading these materials all the way to these rigorous battery cathode quality, every time we sell a recycled battery metal to the market, it displaces the mining of a primary material. And some of the most polluted places in the world are nickel and copper mines. And every time, again, we go through this recycling process, much of our environmental benefit is displacing the need for those very polluting technologies. Very good, Ryan. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank hey, you. Go ahead, Spencer. I was going to throw in one from the chat. Uh, this is for Ryan. Uh, in the extraction sector, how many acres do you actually own and or control? Oh, Ryan's on mute. There we go. There we go. Right, so that for the recycling side, it's a relatively small facility that's not acreage based. On the primary um, extraction side, we had about 1,300 claims last year. We've dropped that down to just under 700. And again, that is different types of uh, brine claims as well as surface material. And throughout central Nevada, there are different types of resources we're evaluating right now as well. All right, I think we're at time, everyone. Uh, so, Tom, great job moderating. Uh, liked your approach of spending a lot of time with, with each company.